Hey, how you doing? It's Emilio here. We love tech and hopefully you do too. And in this video, we're talking about the QNAP NAS. There's a whole bunch of NAS brands out there, right? There's Synology, there's TerraMaster, there's even the big ones like your Dell EMC, your NetApps. But today we are discussing the QNAP. I love, love, love the QNAP NAS. And what I've got, I got myself a new one. It just arrived. I'm super, super pumped to show you my QNAP NAS, like I'm super pumped. Before we do talk about it, you need to do the subscription thing. Click on the button on the bell. We release videos on tech. I love tech, hopefully you do too. Click on that bell so you don't miss out on any of my notifications. Now I got myself a rack-based one. Now you could be watching this going, oh, well I don't have a rack-based one. That's completely fine. The operating system, the software side of things on the NAS, is the same regardless of whether you're going for a rack based one or a desktop based one, one that will sit on your desk. We're then gonna open up our web browser and then we're gonna go and navigate and set up the disks. But, 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 this is just a unboxing setup sort of video that if you're gonna get yourself a QNAP NAS or you've got one and you're just starting out, you need to become an expert. You wanna administer it, you wanna troubleshoot it, you wanna get better at security, you wanna make sure that you're backing it up and that you know the signs and keeping the thing healthy. Well, if you are interested, I've got a full length training course on the QNAP NAS. Down below in the description of this video, you can go and check that out. All right, let's go and set the thing up. Now this model is the QNAP TSH987XU. It is the one that has 16 gig and this hybrid storage solution allows me to put four three and a half inch drives on the front and five two and a half inch ones on the inside. This one is an Intel Xeon E2334 with four cores and DDR4 RAM. And as I said, it was 16 gig and it is a one RU unit. And of course, the point of this one is to go inside of a server rack. This is not like a desktop based unit. This is a rack unit. We've got four slots right on the front where we can easily go and install some hard drives. Now on the back, I've got four ethernet points, I've got four USBs, and I've got dual powers. Depending on the model that you've got, you may have different configurations right here, but also can have a little slot there that you can see for an expansion card. On the top, I can unscrew this thing to actually open it up. I can install my five hard drives right in here, which is one of the main reasons I wanna go on the inside of my unit. And it also will allow me to install additional RAM or change anything else and add expansion cards and things like that. There is my RAM slots. You can see I've only got one stick of RAM in there, but I'm gonna go and set up a second bit of RAM. This is some QNAP RAM that I've got. It doesn't have to be QNAP, and I can just click it right into place. Now these, of course, are gonna be two and a half inch hard drives, which are gonna be the smaller ones, commonly found on a laptop as opposed to the big ones. You just grab yourself your three and a half inch SATA hard drive, you put it inside your enclosure, like so, making sure that it's facing the right way. You then screw the things on the very top to keep it firm, and then you slide that hard drive right into place, making sure that it clicks in. You rack it into a rack. This is the rack that I've got. I've powered it on, and it is ready to go. All my LEDs are turned on. My ethernet cable is plugged in. My powers are both plugged in, and now I should be able to log into my computer and connect to it via a browser. First things first is I'm gonna go into my Google machine, go to the QNAP website. Now I need to find this thing called QFinder Pro. You can see there's versions for Windows and on the Mac. So I'm gonna double click on it, go through the basic installation of this QFinder Pro. Hopefully your QNAP has got an IP address and there you go, it's found it, that's good. Now it's found itself, it's IP of 143, 172.16, It'll start some basic initialization. Uh, we've never done this before, so yes, we need to go and initialize it. And look, good, it's opened up a browser, it's navigated to that IP address, and now we start the installation of our NAS. Now, because this is the first time, it's gonna ask you to update your firmware. I always recommend running the latest version of firmware. Say update, it's gonna go off to the interwebs and it's gonna go and download the latest firmware, which is the latest software or the latest bug fixes. First things first is to give your NAS an appropriate name. What do you wanna call this thing? My name's Aguero, I'm gonna call it Aguero NAS QNAP. Give yourself a username and a password, of course, making your password long and secure. Do your whole time zone stuff. You want to sync it with an NTP server. Hey, it's always good to make sure that the time is always in sync between your NAS and all of your other computers. Because it's doing an obtain IP address automatically through DHCP. 
We don't want that. We're going to set a static one. Do this. Yeah, do this. Set a static IP. And here's a summary of what's going to happen. It's now going to go apply the settings and do its thing. Hooray, our NAS is now done. It's ready. Congratulations. And now you log in with that username and password that you just set. You're accepting some of your data and privacy terms. And then here you are. I'm going to show you a little bit of a demo about your NAS, all the little bits and pieces, all highlighted to let you know what are the main features of your NAS. But now you're ready to go. All right, so I decided to take my hat off and change my shirt. Let's now set up the actual storage. Now, when you first open this thing up, nothing set up. You can go and look at the little bit of an overview here about what this thing is going to do. But now the most important thing is to actually go and create a storage pool. That's really where you need to get started. Without a storage pool, without getting all of your disks together in a RAID and configuring it, you're really not gonna be able to use your NAS. So we're gonna go and select new storage pool and do the thing. Once you've got a storage pool set up in a RAID, you go and do a shared folder. You can go and create some LUNs. Shared folders being for your SMB shares to be able to share them out on a computer, on a network. LUNs, if you want to share them with virtualization platforms, Proxmox, VMware, Hyper-V, that sort of thing. It's more block-based versus file-based on there. Now, what disks do we want to use? Now, in my case, I've got four disks on the front and I've got one of those disks inside. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of them except for that one. I'm going to leave that one as a spare and I want to set all these up in a RAID 5. You'll see that under the RAID type, it's giving me an option around what sort of RAID I want to be using. So you can do a RAID 0, which is a striped. You can do a RAID 5, which has this thing called a little parity bit for failover. But essentially, a RAID 5 is going to let you lose one of the disks without losing data. It's for failover, it's for redundancy, things like that. But I recommend using a RAID 5, especially in this configuration. But you select what you want. Just a warning letting me know that selecting SSDs will improve the system pool. Well, in my case, I don't have any SSDs, so I'm not going to be doing that. So I don't want to change anything from there. Do you want to optimize performance? Well, yeah, I'll leave that ticked on. Pool over provisioning. We'll leave pool over provisioning on at 10%. It's going to give me some warnings and make sure that thing doesn't get filled up. Pool guarantee for snapshots. Well, you're going to do snapshot backups on your NAS if you are, which I recommend always doing backups of all of your data. Then you can tick that. But what that will do is that 20% of the pool that you're going to be creating is going to be set aside, put on the side to be able to let you do snapshot so if you don't want to do that you can untick that and then you can use the whole lot of it otherwise you tick it and then you're going to lose 20 percent straight away alert threshold when it reaches 80 percent being full it's going to let me know okay here's the unallocated space this is how much is available next summary what's going to happen we're looking good and we can now click on create i'm going to say okay and now what it'll do is it'll go and create the storage group it'll go and grab all those disks create them into a raid 5 and then assign them into a storage pool, which then allows me to go and then create shared folders and LUNs. Now that is created. Once that is done, I can then go into my file station. I can start creating shared folders. I can start creating LUNs and do everything from there. But now let this do its thing. The NAS is now ready to go for you to start using the thing. I love this thing. I'm looking forward to using it more and more and more and putting a whole bunch of data and running a whole bunch of apps on it. And that is one of the great things about this QNAP NAS. Hey, remember I do have a training course, as I said at the very start, if you wanna become a pro at using this QNAP NAS. If you wanna become an expert administrator, go and check out that. I've got the link in the description of this video. Hey. YouTube, this is where we are. You need to do the subscription thing as well. Click on that button on the bell. I release videos on all things tech and I know that you'll find them helpful. And until then, stay tuned for the next video as we continue talking about tech. See you then.